Part C of the linear motion of a squirrel. At what point in time does the squirrel turn around and head toward pole B? So let's underline some keywords here. Point in time. So our answer is going to be T equals something, right? Does the squirrel, another key word here, turn around? Now, how do you figure out turning around and yeah, heading towards pole B? How do you figure out turning around mathematically? Well, let me just go ahead and tell you, remind you that that's when the velocity changes from uh, change to sign, right? Either it goes from positive to negative or vice versa. So when we go back and look at the graph of this squirrel's velocity, and remember, this is the velocity graph. So for example, at time t equals 3, its velocity is 0. At time t equals 5, it looks like about a quarter feet per second. Again, the units are feet per second. Uh, we, re we read that in the original problem up here. Okay, so that's the original example and uh, explains the fact that the squirrel is moving from point A to point B and this is its velocity and it's moving on, on a straight line or an electric line. And so um, this is a velocity at any given point in time. So for example, at time t equals one, its velocity is negative one, so, for, so, so on and so forth. So again, the question we're asking is when does it change direction? And again, like I said, it's when the velocity changes sign. So automatically we can look at this graph and we can say, oh, well, what about at t equals zero? Does it change sign? Actually, it doesn't because it's, it goes from zero to negative. So that's not actually changing sign. It has to go from positive to negative or vice versa. How about at t equals three? Yes, it goes from negative to positive. That means what? That means at time t equals three, the squirrel's moving left, right? And then it starts to move right. You see how that's changing direction? Let's go over to the actual squirrel pole. But at t, t equals three, it's it's moving left, it's moving left, and then it moves right at that instant, okay? And then we maybe it, it's moving right and it moves back left again, right? We don't know, but we can look at this and see that at t equals 11, it's got a positive velocity, right? I don't know why I wrote t, I meant to write a positive. Positive velocity, and then at time t equals 11, let's use a different color, let's use uh, purple it goes negative, so a negative V. So that means what? The squirrel was moving to the right, so let's go down here, the squirrel was moving to the right like this, and then it started moving to the left at time t equals 11. And t equals 11, it was zero, right? So the velocity has to be zero for it to change direction. Okay, so there's a good illustration of what's going on with changing direction. I do wanna actually, let's just go ahead and color this in as well over here. So it's got a negative velocity right there. We'll use purple. It changes right here and then it becomes positive. So that would be uh, positive velocity. So actually in this particular case it, it goes from moving left to moving right. So with all that being said, let's go through the formal steps to figure this problem out. Remember, interpret what is given verbally as a graphical expression. Turn around and head towards pole B. So when does the squirrel actually do that? And so in fact, at what point in time does the squirrel turn around and head towards pole B? So in the graph I showed you two places where it turns around, but in the question it's actually just asking, when does it start heading towards pole B? So going back to the illustration I originally drew, at what point in time does the squirrel actually start doing this? Right, because we already said initially its velocity is negative. So initially the, the squirrel starts going this way. So it gives us some context. Let's go ahead and answer that. So the squirrel's velocity goes from negative to positive when that occurs, right? In other words, it's going from left to right. Negative velocity implies he's moving away from his destination. Positive velocity implies he is moving forward. So just remember, with velocity sign, it always has to do with a reference point. You cannot have velocity without a reference point. For example, traveling forward in your car, uh, the reference point is all based on what? What's in front of you, right? And then, of course, whatever is behind you is going in reverse. Okay, so note that the squirrel's velocity being zero does not imply that it is changing direction. Consider its velocity at time t equals six. So 
I actually want to underline this. Um, just because the squirrel's velocity becomes zero does not imply that it changes direction. Now you might be thinking, wait a minute though, doesn't it, when it goes from negative to positive, doesn't equal zero? Yes, but uh, the converse of that, or the inverse of that is not true. Just because it goes, uh, just because it's zero doesn't mean it changes sign. Take a look at the graph right here. The, the squirrel's velocity goes from positive, positive, positive to zero, and then goes positive again. So what does that mean in terms of the linear motion? Well, basically what that means is the squirrel's moving forward, it stops for a brief second, and then keeps moving again. So it didn't change direction, did it? So be careful about that. Remember, if it changes direction, it will be zero. But just because the velocity equals zero doesn't mean it changed direction. Make sure you understand that. Like I said, the converse of that is definitely not always true. So, um, moving back then, step two, interpret. So that was just, you know, hammering that concept home because sometimes students get confused on that. Step two, interpret the verbally stated question as a graphical expression. We must consider where the graph of velocity crosses over from below the t-axis to above the t-axis. Step three, consider the appropriate motion relationship chart. What are we actually asking about? Well, we're actually asking about velocity. So we don't, again, we don't have to focus on this chart for right now. A step four, solve the problem using the graph, the area of the curve, or the slope of the tangent line. In this case, we'll just be using the good old graph. We don't have to do any of that other stuff. The graph of the velocity crosses over from below the t-axis to, to above the t-axis at t equals three. Step five, the squirrel starts heading in the right direction at time t equals three because the graph of the of velocity crosses over there from below the t-axis to above the t-axis. So again, this is when the squirrel starts moving in the right direction. In the case of our little illustration, the squirrel initially starts out moving left, and at time t equals 3, he starts moving in the right direction because the velocity goes from negative to positive. That's it for this example of the squirrel changing direction. If you have any questions about it, let me know.